A new company on the market called Xtropic is making chips that are apparently 10,000 times more efficient than Nvidia chips, and this is all thanks to their new thermal computing. Let's talk about it. This is the idea of thermodynamic computing. I know it's a mouthful, but the idea is pretty simple. Everything in the universe has a little bit of shake to it, a little bit of wobble. It's called thermal noise. It's the reason things have temperature. In old school computers, this noise is the enemy. We spend billions of dollars and a ton of energy trying to get rid of it, to make sure our ones are perfectly one and our zeros are perfectly zero. We build our accountant a soundproof office so he can concentrate. Extropic's idea was what if the noise is the answer? What if the wobble, the shake, the randomness is a tool? And what if we let the Zen master control the wind? To do this, they had to invent a new kind of computer part. Not a bit, but a p-bit, a probabilistic bit. Think of it like this. A normal bit is a light switch. It's either on or off. It's either one or zero, and that is it. A p-bit is not a light switch. A p-bit is a magical coin. You can tell this coin, hey, I'm going to flip you and I want you to come up heads 70% of the time and tails 30% of the time. And the coin just does it. It's not a trick. It's built into the coin itself. It's a weighted coin, but you can change the weighing instantly just by asking. One second, it's a 70-30 coin, and the next minute you can ask it to be 50-50 or 99-1. Now, how does a GPU, our accountant, pretend to be a magic coin? Well, it has to do a ton of work. It has to run a complex math problem to generate a random number. Then it checks if that number is in the 70% range and then it outputs either a one or a zero. It's essentially faking it. It's calculating randomness and that costs energy. Now, Xtropic's p-bit doesn't calculate. It just is. It uses the natural shaky wobbly noise of the universe to be random. It flips itself millions of times a second and the energy it uses to do this is almost not. It's like a whisper. This was the breakthrough, a tiny circuit made of normal computer stuff that could act like a programmable magic coin. But one magic coin is just a party trick. What happens when you get thousands of them, millions of them? What happens when you get them to talk to each other? That's when the real magic starts. That's when you build a thermodynamic sampling unit, a TSU. This is the Zen master's brain. So for a few years, this was all just kind of theory. It was a wild idea from a dozen of people in the garage. They built their little p-bits, they tested them, and they knew they were onto something. Then came October 2025. Last month, they dropped a bomb. They published their research, and they showed the world what they had been building. And they made a bold claim, a claim so big that most people thought it had to be a typo. The claim was this. Their computer could do the work of a top-of-the-line AI computer using 10,000 times less energy. 10 thousand times. Let's just stop and think about that number. It's even hard to get your head around. If your phone battery lasts for one day, 10,000 times longer would be 27 years. If your monthly electricity bill was $100, 10,000 times less would be one penny. If a cross-country flight took five hours, 10,000 times would be less than two seconds. This is not a small improvement. This is not a 10% better chip. This is a different universe. It's a difference between a horse and a spaceship. It's a number that could solve the AI energy crisis, not just help solve it overnight. So how did they do it? What was this test? They decided to teach their computer to do what AI is famous for, making pictures. They created a new kind of AI program to go with their new kind of chip, and they called it Denoising Thermodynamic Model, or DTM. Here's another analogy, because I want to make this super simple. You know those old TVs when the channel wasn't turned in right, and all you could see was static? A mess of random black and white dots? That's noise. Now imagine that hidden inside that static, there's a picture, a real picture, and your job is to get rid of the static so the picture can emerge. You'd probably start by looking for patterns. You'd say, well, this dot looks like it should be darker, like its neighbors, and this one should be lighter. You'd slowly, step by step, clean up the noise until a clear image appears. This is basically how a lot of modern AI image generators work. They start with pure random noise and then they slowly denoise it, step by step, following instructions they learned from looking at millions of real images. But remember our accountant, the GPU, to do this, it has to do a mind boggling number of calculations every single step for every single dot. What is the exact probability that this dot should be this shade of gray given all the other dots? It's kind of like a math nightmare. It's incredibly energy intensive. Now, what about Xtropic's chip, the TSU, the Zen Master? It's made for this. It's built from noise. Randomness is its native language. They built a grid of their magic coins, their p-bits, and they used a clever algorithm called Gibbs sampling. It sounds complicated, but it's like a game of telephone. Imagine each p-bit is a person in a huge crowd, and each person can only see the people standing right next to them. You give them a simple rule. 
try to agree with your neighbors. So one pbit looks at its neighbors, and if most of them are heads, it increases its own chance of being heads. If most are tails, it leans towards tails. It's not a command, it's not a suggestion, it's just simply a nudge. And here is the beautiful part. You don't actually need a boss, you don't need a central commander telling everyone what to do. The entire crowd, just by following this one simple local rule, will very quickly settle into stable pattern. And that pattern is the answer. The pattern is the denoised image. The p-bits aren't calculating probabilities, they are the probabilities. They just naturally, physically settle into the most likely answer. They find the lowest energy state. Like a ball rolling to the bottom of a valley, it doesn't need a map, it just rolls. And that's why it's so efficient. There's no frantic accountant running around, there's just a crowd of coins, all talking to their neighbors and letting the answer emerge from the chaos. The communication is all local, which uses almost no power. The randomness is free, a gift from the universe. They ran a simulation of this process. They taught it to generate a simple, tiny black and white pictures of clothes, t-shirts, shoes, and bags. And they compared the energy their simulated chip would use versus the energy of a real top of the line GPU uses to do a task. And the result is 10,000 times less energy. The bomb had dropped. Okay, so you might want to take a breath because right now you're probably thinking two things. Either this is the greatest invention in human history or this sounds way too good to be true. And the answer is, it's a bit of both. This is the reality check. This is where we have to be grown-ups. The people at Extropic, they're not snake oil salesmen. They're serious scientists. They've published their work. They've even released their software so other people could check their math. And another independent researcher already did and said, yep, their math checks out. But and this is a big but, that 10,000 times number, it came from a simulation on a very, very simple problem. Those pictures of clothes were tiny. It's not creating a photorealistic image from an astronaut riding a unicorn on Mars. It's like you have a rookie baseball player and in the batting cage with a pitching machine, he hits a ball so hard, so fast that it breaks the sound barrier. You've never seen anything like it. And you know for a fact that this kid has power that nobody else has. That's what Extropic has shown. They've proven that the power exists. But that's not the same as playing in the World Series. It's not the same as facing a real life pitcher with a cheering crowd under pressure. They have built a real physical test chip. It's called the XTR Zero. It's a development kit that they've already sent to some of their partners and it's real. These magic coins are real, but it's a test chip. It's the equivalent of the Wright Brothers first flyer. It proved that we could fly, but it couldn't carry passengers across the ocean. The bigger, more powerful chips that could actually run the AIs we use today, those are still being designed. And the first one, called the Z1, is planned for next year. And there's also another catch. You can't just take an AI program that was written for a GPU and run it on Extropic's chip. The chips are fundamentally different. They speak different languages. The accountant can't do the Zen Master's job, and the Zen Masters can't do the accountants. I'm still using analogies, so hopefully it's not confusing. Now, this means we need to invent new kind of AI programs, like their DTM, that are specifically designed for this new kind of computer. It's a whole field of research. It's like discovering a new kind of physics. There's a whole new world to explore. So no, this isn't going to change the world tomorrow. Your phone in 2026 won't have a 30-year battery life. But the potential, oh, the potential. The kid in the batting cage just hit a ball that nobody thought was possible. Now the real work begins. Now they have to train him, build a team around him, get him to the big leagues. So let's dream for a minute. Let's say Extropic manages to do it. Let's say in five or even 10 years, these thermodynamic chips are real. They're powerful and they're everywhere. What does that world look like? Well, first, the big scary energy crisis, it just vanishes. The wall we were racing towards crumbles. We can keep making AI smarter and smarter and smarter without having to build a country's worth of power plants. The brakes are off. Humanity can floor the accelerator on AI development. So what does this mean for you? Well, it means the super intelligent AI that lives only in a billion dollar data center could one day be in your phone or your car or your glasses, and not be a dumbed down version. The real thing, an AI that knows you can help you think, create and learn all day long without ever draining your battery. Imagine a doctor in a remote village with a handheld device that has all the medical knowledge of humanity inside it, able to diagnose rare diseases by just listening to someone's symptoms. It's not possible when the device needs to be connected to a power hungry factory a thousand miles away, but with a chip that ships energy, it's possible. Imagine scientists being able to simulate how new drugs will work inside of a human body or how materials will behave under extreme stress. These are problems of probability of finding the most likely outcome from trillions of possibilities. It's what these chips are born to do. They could help us cure diseases and build things we can't even think of today. And it might even change the nature of AI itself. AI today is very mathematical heavy. It's like a calculator. It's just a very big one. 
It's a computer that thinks in probabilities and embraces randomness. It might lead to an AI that's more intuitive, more creative, more like a human brain, less like an accountant and more like an artist. This is the future that Extropic is trying to build, a future of abundant, efficient, democratized intelligence. It's a huge gamble. They are trying to reinvent the computer from the ground up. They are challenging 50 years of history and hundreds of billions of dollars of investment. The big guys, the companies that make the GPUs, they're not going to stand still. They're working on also making their own chips more efficient too. But they still are polishing the horse-drawn carriage. Extropic is trying to build a spaceship. So we're at a crossroads, a turning point in history. Down one path, air becomes a luxury, a power-hungry beast that strains our planet and is controlled by a few giant corporations. Down the other path, the one that Extropic and others like them are trying to blaze, air becomes like the air we breathe, effortless and a tool that can lift up all of humanity. Now the story is just beginning, the magic coins are real and they're starting to flip, and every flip is another step into that future that just last month we didn't know was even possible. Artificial intelligence is eating the world. Companies and nations alike are in a race to scale the production of intelligence. The plan so far has been simple. Scale the same old computing paradigm by feeding it more data and more power. A lot more power. Data center providers are going as far as building their own nuclear power plants, looking to achieve an energy supply that is poised to dwarf the current US energy grid several times over. But simply pouring more power into the current compute stack will be far too slow and too costly to produce human level intelligence and distribute it to the world. But scaling energy is only half the equation. The other part is about how efficiently we can turn that energy into intelligence. What if, instead of simply scaling power production, we increased how many thoughts we can generate per watt? What if we reimagined the density of intelligence we can achieve in matter? We'd need to fundamentally rethink the hardware layer from the bottom up. Luckily, nature has already shown us that a far greater energy efficiency is possible. We can take inspiration from its underlying physical principles and harness them directly in hardware. That's why at Extropic, we're building a new kind of device, a probabilistic computer for a new era of computation, along with new algorithms that could be run on them. Extropic's computers feature new types of computational primitives that sample from simple probability distributions. And it turns out if you combine many of these sampling circuits together using some concepts from machine learning, you can actually build a system that does kind of the same fundamental task as something like ChatGPT or Midjourney. At the core of our devices lie new computational building blocks, which sample from simple probability distributions. One of our core primitives is called the probabilistic bit, or p-bit. Instead of simply being a zero or a one, a p-bit can be tuned to flicker in between spending time in each state according to a programmable probability. When you connect millions of these p-bits together, immense computational power can emerge. We call these new types of processors thermodynamic sampling units, or TSUs. And today we're unveiling our first step towards scalable TSUs with X0, our first prototype silicon chip. Our X0 prototype is a simple device comprised of dozens of probabilistic circuits, demonstrates a set of novel primitives, and proves that these primitives can be reliably built and controlled in silicon and at room temperature. And for the first time, we're making TSUs available to early users with our testing and prototyping kit called the XTR0. This desktop device hosts two X0 chips, letting researchers explore hybrid algorithms that combine traditional processors with thermodynamic sampling units. XTR0 will be available to select early access partnering organizations this fall. Alongside XTR0, we're open sourcing Thermal, a Python library for simulating TSUs on GPUs. Thermal allows developers to start building algorithms today that will run efficiently on tomorrow's thermodynamic hardware. We're excited to collaborate with the open source community to kickstart explorations of the Thermo AI algorithmic landscape. And last but not least, we're announcing our next generation TSU, Z1. Z1 is our first commercial scale TSU and will feature a quarter million interconnected p-bits per chip, forming a large programmable graph. Z1 chips will be integrated into systems comprised of millions of p-bits, unlocking the potential of thermodynamic computing while maintaining a power efficient and dense form factor. Z1 is important because you can use it to run energy-based models, which are a type of machine learning model that serve the same fundamental purpose as today's transformers or diffusion models, modeling complicated probability distributions. Today, we released our first paper where we talk about denoising thermodynamic models. 
which are a new type of machine learning model that we developed here at Extropic to leverage our thermodynamic sampling units most efficiently. In the research presented in the paper, we find by simulating a small piece of a Z1 TSU that we can solve simple generative modeling benchmarks using around 10,000 times less energy than the most efficient algorithm running on a GPU. At Extropic, we're charting a new path forward for artificial intelligence. In just a few short years, we've moved from concept to room scale cryogenic experiments to a desktop prototype that runs at room temperature. We've designed and built new probabilistic primitives that form the foundation for a whole new era of computing. We believe that thermodynamic computing will fundamentally redefine how we convert energy into intelligence. If you want